Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 75301, Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Starfighter from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 474 pieces, 4 minifigures, and retails for $49.99 in the US. This set was sent to me by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So here's Luke Skywalker's X-Wing, and this set makes me very, very happy. I have not gotten an X-Wing in years. I had one when I was very young, I think it was the 2008 version of the X-Wing, but I've literally not gotten one since then, and obviously it's a very iconic Star Wars vehicle, I'm a very big Star Wars fan. But all the recent X-Wings have just been really expensive, and I just didn't feel comfortable paying that much money for a vehicle like this. Not that they were bad sets or anything, it's just I didn't think X-Wings should be that big. But this year they decided to downscale everything, this is a $50 X-Wing, I believe the X-Wing from 2008 was also $50 if I remember correctly. And that made me say, okay, now's the time for me to get this X-Wing. And having it in hand, this is everything I wanted it to be. This is a very, very fun set. I feel like this scale works better for X-Wings. I know some people might disagree with me, but I feel like the smaller scale is more accurate to the movies. And I feel like this vehicle still captures the right level of detail and everything. It's just smaller than the other ones. This feels like what a LEGO X-Wing should be. I'm very happy with this. The shaping at the front of this vehicle is very interesting. These bricks at the front are on a very slight angle. It transitions from being three studs wide at the front to four studs wide at the back right here. But because the front part of this vehicle is so long, that transition is so smooth that you hardly even notice that it occurred. And it just looks very nice, like even on the sides, like there's a very slight gap right there, but that's about it. It's done super well and looks really good. And it's stable too, I'm impressed they crammed all that into this tiny little space. There's a stickered piece out the front with this yellow marking on it. The actual nose of the X-Wing is gray. And you can see it uses slope pieces to create like this rounded shape. Moving up to the cockpit, you can see it uses this large windshield piece right here. This is actually a printed part. You can see there's just like gray beams printed on top of it. A lot of times they use stickers for these pieces, so I appreciate that it's printed here. It's a nice little touch and definitely makes us feel a lot higher quality. And I know people hate when there's gaps in cockpits and there's no gap here at all. Like this thing fits perfectly onto this build. It feels very smooth, very nice, very elegant. That just connects in a bar right here, so obviously you can open it up. And here's what the interior looks like. You can see there's a little printed console piece right here. This is one of LEGO's just like generic console pieces. It's not special for this set, but it's still cool to get and it works well here. The interior is very flat, lots of room to hold a pilot. And here's how it looks if you actually slide Luke in. You do have to lean him back a little bit, but he fits in there pretty perfectly and then you can just close this up around him. And here's how the vehicle looks with like Luke actually piloting it. Moving immediately behind that, there's a little area for R2 to attach into. You can see it slides in here just like that. Around the sides of that, there's some stickered slope pieces for detailing. They are a little bit different on each side, which is kind of cool. And then behind R2, we have the Technic mechanism that actually transforms the wings. I feel like this is actually integrated pretty well. You can see there's some stickers on some of the pieces, but the Technic seems to almost flow naturally from the brick built part. It doesn't feel out of place or anything. Yeah, I don't think that looks bad at all, and then it transitions back into brick built for the very end. Looking at the back, you can see there's some great texturing. I actually think this looks really nice. Moving next up to the wings, these are fairly simple, but I think they're well done. There's a total of four of them, obviously. They're all very similar, but I have slight differences. This one has this little yellow sticker right here. You can see there's some gray leaking in to show that, like, the paint's chipping. There's also two stickers on the wing itself, one right here and one right here. This one has some red on it. The other wing is almost exactly identical. The only difference is this sticker has slightly different paint chips. That's a small little bit of detail that I really appreciate that they didn't just give us the same exact sticker twice. The sticker on this side is also different, very similar design, though this time around it's not yellow, it's just the same gray as the piece, and there's some like little white marks on it. The blasters at the side of the wings are pretty well designed too, you can see these are wheel pieces right here, this is a little candlestick piece, and then this is like a Sensei Wu step in gray with this little dish piece on top of it. There's lots of creative parts used here, and it also just captures the look of the blasters really well. Out the back, each wing has a thruster, you can see it has a little pink cone on the inside. Once again, very simple design, but I think it's effective. The wings on the underside are done very similarly, though there's a few key differences. One, there's no stickers on these two pieces, they're the exact same two parts, there's just no stickers on either of them. There's a spring load shooter integrated in right here to represent when the blasters actually shoot. And there's a little ski piece right here to give the vehicle something to stand on. Same exact thing on the other side, just mirrored, you can see it has the same exact blaster out the front. And of course, if you push down on the spring loaded shooter, they will shoot. If we flip the X-Wing back upside down, if we come back up to the front, you can see a little bit how that like angled bit is done. Super, super cool seeing it like this. Like this is just such an impressive technique. But the reason we're here is not to look at that. It's for this right here. This is another part of the landing gear, and this is my least favorite part of the set. It uses another one of these skis, which is just attached on a clip. And that connects into this hinge piece right here, but that leaves it very, very loose. And this thing just gets in the way. I get so tired of this thing. It's constantly moving back and forth so you can get it out of place very easily. It's constantly moving back and forth, it won't stay in place at all. And it's not too difficult to knock it off either. I wish they had used something a little more solid for this landing gear, because this is just not very good in my opinion. Easy to remove, probably very easy to customize, but as it stands, this just isn't great. And of course, this is an X-Wing, so the wings can transform into an X-Formation. You push down this Technic piece right here, and when you do, the wings open up. 
Unfortunately, you can only have them like that when it's flying in the air, which I know makes sense in-universe, but if you just wanted to display it like this, if you set it down, it closes back up. So you would have to come up with your own display method if you wanted to display it like in its battle pose, which I'm not the biggest fan of that, but the way they have it is accurate too in-universe, so I can't complain too much, just personally I would have preferred if there was a way to display it in both ways. But I think that's about going to do it for the build of the set, so now let's move on to the minifigures. So here are the first two minifigures in the set, and the only two that really need to be in the set, we have Luke Skywalker and we have R2-D2. This is my first pilot Luke figure I've gotten in years, and I have to say, he is really, really good. I'm kind of shocked how good this figure looks. His pilot uniform looks great, it's super detailed, very accurate to the movie. But my favorite parts about him are for sure the helmet and the face print. The helmet looks really nice, it's one of the more classic pilot helmets, but it has like updated printing on it. There's the rebel symbol right there, and then you just have all these different stripes and buttons and whatnot. And then the face print too, despite having the visor and the chin strap and everything, you can very easily see the Luke Skywalker in there, like it captures his personality well. Which is impressive that they could do that and also have all this stuff on top of it. His alternate face is even better though, you can see the visor's like moved up over his eyes. And he's just looking out and smiling, and with the helmet on, that just looks so, so cool. I absolutely love that. Back to also print, really well done too, accurate to the movie. Yeah, I really don't have anything else to say about it. As for R2, he's a very common figure, one of the most common minifigures of all time. They update him every few years, and I think this version of him is pretty good. He uses silver for the head, dark blue for the printing. Unfortunately, mine's a little misprinted. You can see that the design on the head's actually a little bit angled. It's not supposed to be like that, so it's a little disappointing to see. But that's just me getting unlucky. That won't be like that for everybody who buys this set, though it is a possibility. But yeah, R2 is a classic. It's nice to get him here. It makes sense that he comes in this set. And he's just a well-done figure. And then here are the other two minifigures in the set, neither of which needed to be included at all, so they're both pretty much just like bonus figures. And they're both really good ones, so we have Princess Leia and we have General Dodonna. This version of Leia was previously exclusive to the Tantive 4, which was a $200 set, so it's super cool to see her re-released here. This is an excellent version of Leia, a really good Episode 4 version of Leia. And I'm really happy to get this updated version of Leia, because Leia's like a really iconic and important character, and I don't feel like she comes in enough sets. So it's cool to see her in a set like this, where she really didn't need to be in the set. But yeah, you can see she just has these white robes that continue into this dress piece. A little bit of a belt around her waist. And then around the back you can see she has the hood draped down and she, that belt continues around the back. And then pretty continues into the back of the dress which is a really cool touch because they don't always do that but whenever they do it looks really nice. And there's her alternate face where she has somewhat of a smirk. I don't know if that's the most accurate Leia face but I think it's fine. And the front face print for her is still pretty good. And then General Dodonna. He is not the most relevant character from any of the movies. For some reason he gets a new face print here. But that's not a bad thing. For like kids and whatnot he's definitely the least interesting figure in this set. But for hardcore Star Wars fans, getting a character like this is definitely super cool. And as I said, like, he didn't need to come in the set at all, so he's mostly just like an extra. So it's really cool to see him here. As I said, he's got an all-new face print, so you can use that for your own customs or whatever, or you can keep it on this guy. The hair piece is a really nice part. It's the Doc Brown from Back to the Future piece in white. Torso and light, as you can see, has like this tan jacket slash robe. And that design continues into the back. There's also a look at his alternate face where he seems to be angry or maybe smiling. It's hard to tell. But regardless, it's a different expression than he has at the front. He also comes with the blaster and silver, which is a more un common color for that part, so that's always really cool to get. Yeah, these two are both really great figures that did not need to come in the set at all, but I really, really appreciate that they do. So, overall, would I recommend this set? I think if you're a Star Wars fan and you don't have an X-Wing yet, for sure, get this one. It's representative of the vehicle in the movies, it's got really great minifigures, and it's a pretty fair price, especially because you can find it 20% off most places now. Yeah, I don't have a ton to say about this set just in general, but it's definitely very good. I don't like that front bit of landing gear, that's something that's not very good, but that's something that's very easy to customize or just straight up remove. But other than that, yeah, I like this set. I'm very happy to finally have an X-Wing, and it's gonna look really nice on my shelf. So if you're interested, I'd say yeah, for sure, get it. But those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe if you're new. I do LEGO videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!